the committee would like to welcome the audience and thank you for attending. Viewers may watch board committee meetings online at tcaps.net backslash board. Recorded meetings may be viewed on demand at the same address. Uh, there is uh, no public comment. And uh, we move on to procedural items, um, which is the draft meeting minutes. Are there any changes to the draft meeting minutes? Hearing none, there remain as posted. And then we'll move on to the agenda review for both the September 9th and September 23rd meetings. Okay, so September 9th, we have our standard call to order pledge, the review of the agenda. Recognition, two really cool ones this month. Uh, MEMSPA Outstanding Principal Award for our region with Brian K. Um, and then we have the uh, Michigan Art Education Association Middle Level Art Educator of the Year. Um, and so we'll be able to have the opportunity to recognize both of them. Excited about that. Um, then we will have our public comment number one, legislative update, which is not really anything um, new, uh, district highlights, uh, and then uh, still working on the USD TCLP presentation. However, I will tell you, I got an email about two hours ago from right now, TCLP is saying their lawyer is saying for some reason they don't have the ability to do the USDA program. But they're trying to work to see if maybe there's something that's maybe there's maybe one still possibility. They're working on the next week and said they'd get back with me. So I, I don't know if we just maybe want to scratch that for now or just an update, maybe change it from that to update presentation to update. Um, or we could just put uh, pending after it, so it's on the agenda, but that's it's kind that's of noted fine. that it may or may not occur. So you want to do it? So, okay, we can do that. Um, which is disappointing, and I'm still going to work that because everything I look at should be right. I wonder but, why they can't figure out uh, how to like get that. anyone I to do it. I just got it two hours ago. So, I mean, it's rural electrification. I know we're because they're rural, I like all of it. So, anyway. Um, so, then we will have our report outs of our curriculum committee and exec committee. We did not have finance this month. Um, we will report out on the MASB uh, summer conference from uh, uh, board member Ballinger. And then we will have um, board office hours as well by Trustee Ballinger and September we'll be attending Trustee Raymond. Um, we'll have our consent agenda, which does have a field trip on there um, as well. Uh, we have um, the um, district course catalog that was uh, approved by the uh, curriculum committee um, and then uh, meeting minutes. We have the um, school safety update certification of Board of Education and voting delegates for the MASB assembly, interdistrict open enrollment, uh, the birth of us property update and board policy discussion. Um, there is one thing that, help me out, uh, where is the League of Innovative Schools? Under the conferences. It is, okay, thank you there. All right, I didn't see that, thank you. All right, um, and so we will then, uh, again, we have um, a certification for the Board of Education voting delegates for the MASB assembly, which we do each year. Um, Interdistrict open enrollment. Uh, this is an ISD ag agreement amongst the five county districts. We do not participate in out of ISD school of choice under section 105 and 105C. So we do have to approve this plan to opt out of that state plan. Um, and then a birth of boss property update, which I'll tell you, I do have a purchase agreement, mm -hmm. but I don't have a state of use of the building yet. Scott Hardy, we talked yesterday, is working on that. Um, so still in negotiations, and I expect still will be, you know, at this point um, going up, but we're getting closer, little by yeah. little. Um, and then board policy discussion to finish out the policies. And our second public comment, our closing remarks and adjournment. Is there a time limit on the board policy discussion? That's up to you. No, I mean, we, oh, on this one? I mean, I think it depends how close. We did really well last time. Yeah, that we're close. I feel like we can probably do it in a, a similar session mm -hmm. timing. And if not, we could always push it to the following meeting because that was kind of where we thought we would be done to potentially use that. Or if you had time in the study session at the end, you could yeah, just do so, a little bit more if you had to. I mean, I think depending, it's a relatively, it's a lighter agenda. 
Yeah. So I think we should have plenty of time. I believe if I counted, there's between eight and 10 policies yet to discuss, and I don't think there's going to be a lot of contention based on the, what was suggested. I thought it was a little more than that, but was, was it more? Of but the ones that they like brought forward that they wanted to change. There was any right. eight or 10 left? I think no. so. Yeah, we so got else we updated? Close to 15. Yeah. Last time. So I think we should be able to have a reasonable and be done. But even if not, we have a couple of meetings because I think we're progressing nicely. So, um, but I mean, maybe that is to your point because I did want to add, um, <clears throat> we've got to determine the uh, subject of the study session in October. So maybe we should add that as item E rather um, okay. before we leave board policy discussion till the end. Uh, e will be the study, so just basically identifying the subject of the study session in October. And I think that's the only change right now. I know there was a couple of other potential ones, but I don't think we either don't need them or we're not ready to add them. Okay. All right, and then we do have the study session of September 23rd. Our call to order the pledge, review the agenda, our first public comment, consent right now that has meeting minutes. We will have our study session for the high school uh, student achievement, and we will have representatives from all three high schools here uh, for that um, plan. I know they're re ready to go. They got their plan and excited to do that. We'll have our second public comment, our board president closing remarks, and adjournment for that meeting. Okay. And then as I continue to go uh, with the agenda for this meeting, um, we do have in there the League of Innovative Schools. You may remember we're one of only two districts in the state of Michigan uh, that are part of the League of Innovative Schools. Uh, the fall convening um, is here in late September. Um, we do have grant dollars in our Title II fund um, for me to be able to participate in that. You might remember we've gotten quite a bit of resources uh, from this and, and uh, a lot of uh, exposure to many different uh, programs and opportunities. So um, I'm requesting to be able to do that, uh, go to that um, uh, that professional development. And right now is on consent agenda, um, unless you have any reasons to move it. Anybody going with you? No. This is actually for the first time they've only invited superintendents only. Um, first time they've done it. Um, so. Yeah. Wait, was it? Lindsay, Lindsay Unified and just outside of Fresno, oh. California. Actually, Visalia, <laughs> California. All right. So, um, Lindsay Unified is one of the first districts in the country that went entirely competency-based. Um, and it's a, a relatively um, a school with quite a bit of poverty. Yeah. Um, and it's really had some great academic gains from it. So, uh, really interested to go visit the school and see that work and talk to the administration. and and uh, see what, how that might work for us. So. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so next is informational items, so human resources. Thank you. Starting off with our staffing update, I, I don't want to put this out to the universe <laughs> and curse myself, but at this point we are completely staffed at the elementary level. Um, secondary, we are still looking for middle school science and high school special education. When we get this late in the year, we are you know, doing plan Bs in the event that we cannot find qualified candidates, but if there are individuals out there, we would love to talk to you about joining our team. We're completing the process, our hiring process, for administrative vacancies that were created as a result of uh, the promotion of both Ben Berger and Ryan Ranger. Um, and as well as our director of curriculum, which is a replacement for the uh, vacancies created by the executive director of innovative programs and executive director of school improvements, um, kind of combining those into the one director position. So we'll be finalizing that, getting that information out to you as soon as possible. Um, still have a number of support vacancies that we're looking for. Obviously, we know living in this area, child care is something that our families need, our staff needs, and we have the facilities and the ability to do um, our extended day programs for families, but we need to be able to staff those. So if there's anyone interested in working in those programs, um, would certainly provide and be able to extend our services to the community. Looking for some junior kindergarten aides, um, starting out those are temporary positions which could uh, turn permanent for the rest of the school year based on the number of class size numbers in junior kindergarten. A variety of other instructional aides and as usual we're still looking for great bus drivers and aides. 
Um, so those positions that we've talked about, the CDL, funded by the district, paid training opportunities, referral bonuses for any staff members who refers to our support groups, and also sign-up bonuses for our various um, uh, hourly staff positions. So um, those are all posted on the website. We will continue to do our open interview process here at Glen Loomis Administration Building. Those are on Wednesdays, every other week Wednesdays. <laughs> Our first one um, coming up here soon is on September 11th from 8 to 10 in the morning. Then September 25th from 3 to 5, October 9th from 8 to 10, and then October 25th from 3 to 5. Yeah. So moving on, I think we already touched on this. Or oh, is there any questions on the staffing? Nope. Um, <laughs> all right. And then moving on to the board policy, I think we, we've talked about that. I, I, very pleased. I think we made a lot of great progress. We have updated, or I should say Kendall has updated all of the policies to reflect the changes that the board agreed to at the September, or I'm sorry, at the August 12th board meeting, and um, including some revisions to the medication, adding the over-the-counter um, language to that, and all the other just procedural things that people had asked be included. And so we will update and give you copies of those updated policies before the next board meeting. And then um, hopefully we'll get through the remainder of them and be set for adoption soon thereafter. Yep, it was definitely, I think we're getting through them. And if there's anything that really does hold up, obviously we can always adopt and then come back and just set that for a January meeting. Especially when there are revisions to policies, those go on the consent agenda, they're pretty, they're pretty simple. We can certainly have dialogue around those here um, at this committee meeting as well. All right. Anything else on HR? Um, then we will go on a communication update to phone to Ginger Smith. Thank you. Yeah, so we've got some exciting, I'm a huge data kind of girl, so when I have data to share, I'm always kind of excited about it. And we are in the last week right now of our Sunshine Bus. Uh, the Sunshine Bus will conclude on Friday. So. Although the numbers are still lacking for adding in the numbers for this week, uh, I do want to share with you the total uh, thus far for what we have distributed through the Sunshine Bus. Um, in terms of bags of food, knowing that each, each bag of food is, is not a meal, it's like a week's worth of meal, and then new to the program this year, we did an additional bag per family, and that was more substantial items, such as a jar of peanut butter, a loaf of bread, a um, box of pasta, that type of thing to encourage um, a more substantial meal to have as a family. And we also did uh, some fresh fruit this year uh, and did some more uh, perishable items to just kind of round out the the healthiness factor, I guess you could say, of what we're providing. So we did just under 3,000 bags of food. We are currently at 2,890 bags. Uh, by comparison, last year, our overall total was 1,860. So it's, it's very exciting to know that we've got an increase of over 1,000 bags of food this summer that we are sharing out with our community. In terms of the basic needs, uh, that is a new thing that we added in this summer as well. And we gave out 3,338 items thus far. Um, the most needed and requested items, we gave out 655 toothbrushes and then followed by deodorant, toothpaste, and body wash. So that was um, an extremely successful program. I'm beyond thankful for our uh, bus drivers, Terry and Tim, who did a fantastic job of um, really getting to know the families and, and creating that connection uh, throughout our community. And of course, for our, our partnership with the Father Fred Foundation for all the work they did and for all their volunteers putting those bags of food together and for our uh, SSN team for uh, providing all the basic needs on the bus every week. Uh, also for our SSN, we just had last Thursday and Friday our pop-up shop. If you remember last year during spring break, we had our very first pop-up shop. 
So this time we did it with the theme of back to school. We had a lot of brand new clothes and a lot of gently used clothing items. We had 85 students who either came by appointment and some who just did a walk-in when they were uh, visiting uh, Glen Loomis for their backpack pickup through the Rotary event. So we also had uh, 45 additional students who were unable to attend but reached out to us and packages were provided for them. Um, the next pop-up shop will be October 3 and 4 and we will host that here to promote the distribution of all the winter gear before winter hits. So snow pants, boots, mittens, all that good stuff. So more will be coming up soon uh, as we announce that, but just wanted to put that one on your radar as well. Um, finally, I also wanna just touch real quick on um, our McKinney-Vento population with that. No, every year we do need to clear out our uh, roster of students who are identified and then we start over. That is just part of how the process uh, works with the state. And through these events that we've done this summer, we have already been able to identify 48 students. So the benefit to that is that we can identify them right away and provide services immediately. So uh, grateful for Tyson Birch and his transportation team because they are now able to help us get those kids to school on day one, whereas otherwise we might not see them until we um, have identified them later on into the school week and then um, plan for transportation. So very grateful for all the help uh, around the district in identifying these students early and hopefully we'll even be able to identify a couple more in the next two days um, to ensure that we have as many students here on day one as possible. Ginger, are those new students that are identified? Not necessarily. Okay. Okay. It, the slate clears yes. and then re-up. So. Got it. Okay. I'm sure some are. Okay. And and some are not. Okay. So, um, it's basically student. If uh, when we had our pop-up shop, we had their uh, questionnaire when they first uh, checked in. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and uh, through that questionnaire, we could then identify them and then assist with assistance right away. Perfect. So, I saw um, a couple of postings online. Is it, are all the backpacks now gone? I believe they were, the, the remaining backpacks were distributed to the buildings at the building level. So I do know the high schools did receive a handful each. I do not know if they are gone, but they received them in time for the orientation dates. So my guess is, if they're not gone, it's probably getting to be slim pickings. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they okay. did. They did get those all pushed out at curriculum. Somebody. Uh, I thought the high school ones were all gone. Were I thought gone. they said. Yeah. I thought okay. there was still some elementary and Blair and Traverse Heights. Every kid got Blair one. and Traverse yeah. Heights. Yes, every child will have yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, and then the next thing I just want to provide a quick update on safe routes to school. I know that's. Um, an important topic for many of the families uh, who are in the uh, vicinity of West Middle School and uh, TCAPS Montessori. And um, we are working that grant through West Middle School. And uh, so Kristen Studeman did submit the request for consideration of that grant. Uh, I have met with our liaison with Safe Routes to School, and we have scheduled a team kickoff meeting for September 12th. Um, that will just be a handful of the people that will be part of the team, but attending that meeting will be Chuck Korn um, and then his planning director, um, our, our coordinator, and then um, a few, couple other people. We've got Fern Spence, who's asking to be a part of that group as well, uh, and then myself. And then I'm also scheduled for a full day of training on September 19 regarding the application process. So that'll be that'll be a fun fun day. So anyway, so that's where we're at with that, and uh, that'll be probably quite an extensive and longer uh, grant process than than many of the others. So um, we'll see how long it takes us to cross all the T's and dot all the I's on that one. But that's where we're at. That's all I have. Okay. 
Any uh, questions? I, and, yeah, I do have another item, and I'm seeing especially with Erica here now, I think it's really timely because I forgot it, but she asked for it, so it's good. Um, so uh, we do have in your packet, um, I asked Connie to put together um, a policy for naming rights for facilities. You'll remember oh, yeah. under Neola we had one, and so she's been able to work to draft one under what we're doing now with Troon um, with that. So you might remember that we had a request um, just as we were kind of getting started in the conversation of uh, a possibility of naming um, the facility, the tennis facility at Central High School uh, for a uh, retired coach. Um, at that time, we had said no, but um, we'll probably take a look more at it when we you know, review policies and where that is. Um, lately, we've had another request from two individuals I know that also contacted Erica. So Erica asked me to put this on the agenda for this um, for consideration for uh, the board, uh, the full board meeting. Um, again, it, it kind of, you know, really says the key term in it is the board shall refrain from naming facilities or portions of facilities after individuals. Should the board choose to, which the board still can though, consider naming for an individual that shall follow the steps as noted above, which are there. So the board has the ability to, policy is kind of very stringent on it, but totally you guys' purview of how you want to move forward with that. And Dr. Renner, can I mention too, this is the Neola language. So they did not have a corresponding one for Troon, so we put it over into the Troon packet. But, so this gives an opportunity at the next meeting, if you wanted to, to revise this policy, we could certainly do so before they were adopted. Mm-hmm. This was just our previous. Got it. Yeah. Um, so this has not been added, or, or we're discussing here to add it to the next agenda. That is correct. Okay. Okay. Yep. I mean, you know, policy for two, but then there's also the case of you have an individual you know, specific request. Yeah. So, you know, I think, you know, I, I would put this just prior in the policy element. The question is, is how do you want to go about the specific request? It's kind of a little bit intertwined, <laughs> yeah. you know, and that's kind of what we set at the table when this happened. So, you know, I, I, I kind of leave it to you guys as, you know, purview of how you might want to go about, you know, this is kind of, to me, an easy, you know, adopt policy. The question is just, what do you want to do with that ask? Mm -hmm. I mean, Maybe we can just put it. Well, it's a, yeah, it's a I'm, trying, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. It's always awkward to have a, dis I don't like to have discussion of policies when you do one person and that usually leads to a weird policy that's bad for everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you just put it after your policy discussion. Yeah, that's probably the easiest way. And make sure you and hit this one. Up in the and make sure yeah. you hit this policy. You know, and everybody might be just good with it already. I don't know. Yeah, you know? exactly. But I think do that, and then you're just going to have to add that after as your last, you know, quite your last point. Mm -hmm. Procedurally, it's the only way I know how you do it. Okay, that's fine. So yeah. then, can we add to make sure we cover that? <laughs> We make sure we cover that in the board policy yes. discussion, and then we'll add item. So, Stacy, make sure you work with Kenny to forward that to the full board. P. Okay. F, and then G. I guess we'll have it after. That'll be the last item. So that would be item G, which will be Central High School Tennis Facility naming. And I also think, I mean, this is naming of new facilities. It specifically talks about when construction of a new school facility is That was, part of, that was part of the reason why we wanted to look at it. It didn't exactly meet, what about an older facility or right. redone, re, you know, remodeled? This was the point. Right. That's why it was kind of okay. like, we don't know, but we definitely know this policy doesn't fit any of right. it. Right. So we kicked it down the, the, you know, the road until we got to the policy, you know, and then there. That's why I think you got to address the policy, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then okay. make your decision yeah. off of the new policy. But we okay. may not be able to finalize anything anyway until we've adopted the policy. It's depending on what we adopt the policy too. That's but true. We could still have a discussion. We can have a discussion. About and, and, and they're, yeah, and they're willing. I think it's not like you just. They're very done. patient. They have yeah. been so. You know, if it took but, until the next month whatsoever. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're closing in anyway, so yeah. it That's may right. be a quick discussion uh, that we kick down past the right things. But okay, perfect. So we'll add it. it this will be on the. Yeah. Okay. We'll but make sure everyone Mr. Has a Mr. Grant Parsons is the last one that called me and he understood that that's the process and he was perfectly fine with it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My general gut is that we would do it after we're done with all the policies, adopting them, but we can have the start having the discussion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So this will be forwarded to you in another, you know, with any additional policies for discussion that we'll add. And like I said, I think at this point it needs to come to the table because we already know there's it 
it, it has some revision need. Right. Okay. Any, uh, any other items or comment questions on communications? Obviously, fantastic news. Thank you for the work and getting uh, all of those, everything distributed. That's amazing. And then, um, yeah, that's it. I've noticed uh, student support networks uh, being noted a few times as well as receiving some community support. So I uh, appreciate the community for that. I know it's a very important program. Huge. Any other items? All right. With that, uh, the next board executive committee meeting is Thursday, October 10th at 4 p.m. in this room. And uh, with that, I adjourn the meeting. Thanks.